Hello, welcome to a demonstration from Midwest Cam showing how to use your process library called the tool crib. Well, first of all, when you get the item off your email, uh, save the attachment. In the tool crib archive, you can copy and paste it or move it to a, a folder. In my documents, I'm showing using the documents as a place to put it, but it could be any personalized folder. Create a folder and call it GibbsCam or Gibbs Processes, and in there paste in your tool crib library. You need to extract it and let it unzip the uh, archive. There's uh, 490 items that are in this uh, tool crib. And the tool crib is a nice standardized library of GibbsCam processes that will help you get up to speed with machining quickly without having to look at charts and graphs for minor drill sizes and tap sizes and whatnot. Once it extracts it, you'll have a folder in here called the tool crib. Now inside that folder there's another folder and I don't really want a folder inside of a folder. If I'm going to do a control C and copy that in my documents I'm going to go back in here and just paste it in there and it's going to replace the one that I had so I'm just going to have one folder. It's just a quick way of getting rid of that extra folder. So now in my documents in the Gibbs process folder there's a tool crib with the content. Once you have that set up and installed then we can uh, set the directory in the process menu in GibbsCam and set it to your documents, GibbsCam processes to this folder and just say select that folder now it's set. Then under my process menu I'll see the tool crib with all the items that are in it. Uh, basically uh, let's kind of demonstrate a few of the uh, processes. I'm going to grab a point with my mouse. I'm just going to put a couple points on my screen. If I want to drill these points and have them a counterboard for a, for a hold down bolt, well, one of the items in the tool crib is counterbores. So if I want a quarter inch uh, bolt hold down, I can click this, it loads it in, and say do it, and it just spotted and drilled. Oop, let me turn simulation off here. So now it's going to spot the holes and then drill the holes and then counter bore them and then chamfer the hole that's down inside the counter bore. Now this process loaded in the tools so they're all predefined with descriptions in the comments. The process was loaded in using the uh, retract to the eye plane from my document but we can set that to retract to 0.1 if you like. A lot of times you can load in a process that we built and modify it to how you want to use it again and again. In my RPM and speeds, I can update these for speeds and feeds for uh, you know the metals for the steel that I'm cutting here. Uh, we're set for uh, carbon steel and so forth. Now if I redo it, that data is going to be in here. Speeds and feeds. Also the cutting uh, depth, you could change the depth of cutting. So they were built based on a one inch thick plate, but they can be modified just by opening up and changing it. So now I have the speeds and feeds for the uh, mild steel that we're cutting. And now I might want to save this for next time I use this so I don't have to maybe change the R plane definition or speeds and feeds. So in my processes, you can save. In my GibbsCamp process folder, you can create a new folder there. And I'll just call this C bores for my own little uh, counter bore library. And I'll open this up. And this is going to be for a 0.25 you know, bolt. Um, it's also for 1018 steel that I've modified it for. Now I can save this. So I'll just take and delete these tools. And it's telling me I have operations. That's okay, they're going to go with it. So I don't have no tools. And if I select these items, if I go load in that process, um, I'm going to reset my directory for my process library. And now I can, and if I do select these, they'll get replaced when I click this new process. And the points are selected, say do it. So now it's just spotted, drilled, and bored them with the exact data that I wanted to reuse again. So 
So sometimes the process library that, that you have, you can use it as a template to get your role in, modify things, and then save things. Um, let me go grab, maybe just put a couple more points with my mouse just to show a few things. So we have some more points. So if I select that point in the tool crib, maybe I'd like to um, you know, do a tap there. Um, we do have the tap center drill library that has combination center drill for odd 80 up to inch and a half and millimeters that convert into inches. Uh, tap uh, with spot drills for cut taps or roll forms are also there. So if I want to cut tap for a chord 20, I can load that in. It put the neat t tools I need in here with descriptions. I can select the hole I want and say do it. It just tapped it. Of course, in my process, we can update the speeds and feeds for the steel we're using now. And then maybe change my uh, cutting depth to go through the part. So I'll go minus uh, 1.02. And then redo it. So now I've modified that. And again, you can save that so you don't have to redefine that again if you'd like to put that in your own process library. So the tool crib has all the, the threads. It's got uh, SAE ports. So if you want a port for a 7A's 14 port uh, process, now before I would click one and bring it in, always check the condition here because if these are selected, they will get replaced with what you select. So if we go back to tool crib, grab me an SAE port for a, an SAE port, load all the tools in, select the hole where I want my port to be done, do it, and it just drilled it, spotted it, drilled it, we have a special drill another drill that goes so far deep then we actually have a form tool which is the standard SAE port. So this will put in that port process now so I don't have to redefine that. And uh, this port is using a tap but it could be a thread mill as well. So then you could modify this, change it how you want. In your process library you know for your ports can grow. Um, you could add as many as you want within the libraries of the size with different configurations. Uh, the Process Tool Crib library also has a library for like face mills. So if I want a face mill, maybe a two inch face mill zigzag, just load it and say do it. Now it just face milled my stock. If we want to be that to be tool one, we can move it up to tile one, sort my ops, put set way up at the beginning. If I rewind single block, the tool will come and, and cut that way. Uh, in your process, course you could update the speeds and feeds tell it maybe you want to go one direction clear the part by the quarter inch maybe start in this corner maybe increase my cut width a little a little bit more if you want so whatever changes you want you can update it now we have a one direction cutting and then we can save that process we can save this for next use uh, so make a new folder this will be called face mills then in this folder, we would give it a name. This is a two inch diameter face mill. So one direction. And it's for 1018 steel. So you can give it a nice lengthy name. Um, I'm going to reset my directory back to the GIFS process folder. It shouldn't be doing that. For some reason, this 2011 is doing that. But now I have the tool crib that we started with. We've added a counterboard directory and a face mill directory. Um, I'm going to go reset the directory to my working process directory that I've been using, which is in my D drive, RIC, and I have a GIFS cam process folder. So now in my personal folder here, I have the tool crib like we just used. Um, I have a lathe directory for all my lathe stuff. It can be by LA groups and all the different styles of machining that we, that we use. You can have a milling folder. In your milling folder, you can have a whole directory where you could even you know copy paste that drill chart that we had because the tool crib does have a drill chart for all the different types of drills. So. The tool crib is a template you can use, load something in, modify it, 
saving it, saving it in a different directory with different uh, uh, descriptions of where it sits and how you use it. You can have an inbuilt directory for roughing only, or for maybe just rough in finish contour or rough in pocket and finish contour. So as you work, you want to save things that will save you time, so you don't have to redefine the uh, process again and utilize process library knowledge to assure accuracy and save a lot of time. If you have any further questions, feel free to give us a call. Bye now and have a great day.